environment. So this is this is the cool office environment. Yeah, this is the scooters that you have in the Google area. You know, they're driving scooters around, or they have um, those balance balls in the training room for comfort. So you don't have to sit in a chair all day. You can sit on one of those like workout balls. So those types of things, and then the general atmosphere. You know, is it cool? Is it relaxing? Is it bright colors? All of that stuff. And then communications. So communication is huge. It's always, it's probably the most, the number one struggle of all companies. And employees will always say communication. We always need to work on our communication. So a lot of this is, um, has to do with also the transparency. So do you have a senior management team that kind of keeps everything secretive? Or are they telling their employees from bottom to top what the actual goals are for the year and how they can Im move, impact them? And that's very important. Um, culture, like a boss. So this is the CP Federal Credit Union culture in color. Uh, we are a crazy smart, wickedly talented team who have a huge passion for serving members, the community, and each other. We work for the wow, go for the gusto, and promote fun and a little weirdness every day. So this is how we base all of our decisions. This is how we treat each other, and this is our commitment to our members. So it kind of touches everything. And um, some of the items here are, and how this was developed, basically, um, in 1999, our boss at the time, President John Christ, um, or 19, really? <laughs> That's when you started. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're just talking about that. So in 2009, Right. Um, we had the Disney Institute come in and help us to build our culture because we were like, we need really a true model. So we used their model to help build this. And our employees developed, not the senior managers, not a little secret committee, the member or the employees of CP Federal Credit Union built and created that culture statement that we were to live by. So they have a lot of skin in the game. Um, so crazy, smart, wickedly talented, that is um, our commitment to knowledge and investment in employees. Uh, we built a new training room. We um, have a coaching and development strategy in place for this coming year. So our, um, our review process is a little different. And so we're trying to make sure that our employees, and this is our, our new president and CEO's mission, is to make sure they have joy walking in in the morning and they have joy when, when they walk out of that building after work. So that is her supreme mission and that is all she wants out of the employees and that's it. So we're working and everything that we are doing this year is going to feed into people finding their joy. Um, huge passion for members. Uh, one example is our system upgrade. We just did a complete overhaul of our computer system. I call it the great brain transplant because that's it, in essence what it was. So. Um, for our members, it was a little painful. We ran into some issues. We had people that couldn't access their funds. We had people that their credit cards weren't working. So our president and CEO, through Facebook, they would complain, because everybody loves to do that. It's awesome. Um, and what we weren't able to solve for them, she would personally call them. She personally called somebody who wasn't able to purchase groceries for their child um, that night, and then she, she was able to fix their card and, and get it resolved, but she was the one making those phone calls. So, and I don't know what other company does that, really. I mean, she's proof that um, our culture is all about the numbers, too. Um, the community and each other. Basically, we have a huge um, belief that we need to reinvest in the communities we serve. So this past year, uh, we have a day of training, we call it. And we did um, a new thing called CP Gifts. So we engaged our employees. We gave them um, each $25, I think it was. $25 in cash. In cash. And they all had to, they could either do it as a team or they could do it individually. They would go out in the community and either figure out how to touch somebody with that $25. So they, some groups got together, some departments got together and went and surprised somebody by buying their groceries at Myers for a family. We did that one. Um, other people bought, um, supplies for the fire department. So it was our way of kind of giving back to the community. So that's just one, of, one example of how we do that. Um, work for the WOW. The WOW is our standard. So everybody raise your hand. Raise it a little higher. That's our WOW. So it's going that extra mile and pushing it a little over the top. 
Um, and so that is our commitment to wow one member at a time every time. And then go for the gusto. Our gusto is just how we interact. So it's greet the members, use their name, be sincere, um, offer a pleasant goodbye, those types of things. And so that's how our gusto, it's an acronym. Um, and then promote fun and a little weirdness every day. We got that nailed down. So we have themes upon themes. Um, our former president and CEO is dressed up as Dorothy, uh, Ginger, Peter Pan. Peter Pan. The tights were a little disturbing. Um, <laughs> would not recommend. No. Um, but yeah, he he was the the primary example of just putting fun into a financial institution, which is kind of hard. Let's be honest. It's it's not the most interesting work, um, but he definitely nailed it and set that pace. And then I think last week, or this week, uh, one of our um, team members in the IT department, they decorated their um, boss's office with um, spiders. So he had probably a couple hundred spiders hidden everywhere. I'm sure he has not found them all. But um, so they just kind of just the fun stuff to kind of keep it interesting. And that is all I All right, I'm going to turn it over to Becky. And she's going to talk about her piece. All right. This is my safety net. I'm just going to set it down because I tend to talk with my hands and I'll end up throwing it probably. So let's <laughs> just throw it down. So I want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, maybe about how culture ties into, um, you know, how you and how you are perceived as far as getting a job. I want you to start thinking about these things now versus waiting until that time comes when you're going to be looking for a job. And it doesn't matter if it's your career or if it's just something you want while you're going to school. Um, so I thought I'd start by screwing up the PowerPoint. <laughs> Dog on it. Okay. How do I get that? Escape? No, that's words. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, sorry. Sorry. I need a clicky. I'm sorry. <laughs> so my name is Becky Billingsley. Um, I do have some certifications in human resources. Um, that just means that I studied really hard and took a very terrible test, and I'm so glad I passed it because I would never take it again. Uh, if I didn't pass it, I'd just forego the initials. Um, I worked at CP Federal Credit Union for um, 22 years, um, and I started out as an entry-level person bouncing people's checks in accounting, um, and I worked my way up. I had a college degree um, from Western Michigan University in banking and finance, um, and I was an entry-level bookkeeper and I took a pay cut to come to CP because um, I wanted to get in my field and what I ended up was in a very neat culture um, where uh, Sarah had talked about our former CEO John Christ um, you know gave me a chance in human resources and that's where I've been uh, since 1999 um, and I love what I do so much better than accounting because it's just so much balancing and general ledgers and debits and credits but uh, my job at the credit union is hiring so I do a lot of hiring, interviewing, recruiting, um, exit strategies, that's a fancy word for terminations, <laughs> or people that leave, uh, I thought that'd be fun. Um, I also oversee the benefits and the payroll piece uh, of the credit union. All right. Woo, all right. So who you are matters, and I, this, I mentioned this, I want you to think about, think about that now. Um, I, have some, I have some stories from the trenches. Uh, because I have seen a lot of interviews because I conduct them. I hired over 40 people in the last 12 months. Um, you know, we've had some individuals come and go. We have a lot of part-time employees that come here while they're going to school. Um, and so, you know, I've seen a lot of stuff. And I want to give you some of the best things that I've seen to do and not to do, okay? Um, and some tips. So when you see this uh, logo, I want, what comes to mind? Cars, quality, expensive, right? All right. How about this one? Let's sit down. So fast food, right? Quick French fries. How about this one? Southwest travel. Aren't they the fun airline, right? Did you ever watch the reality show, or was that like before you guys this time? That was kind of neat to watch. They did a reality show about Southwest. Well, I want to know what your brand is. You perceive things when you see those, and I want you to think about what do other people, or what would a recruiter or an employer see about me? And not only should it be just what they see when you're in their office, but it should be who you are. 
Um, so I want you to think about what's your brand? What, what do you stand for? What are you? Um, and that, you know, that kind of helps give you. So here is uh, our logo, or our logos, that Sarah has uh, so graciously come up with. Yep, we're different, you know, we're kind of fun. What I'm looking for when I interview someone is, I want to know, are you going to fit in at CP? Are you going to give great service? Or are you going to be crusty and mean? <laughs> right? If you're crusty and mean, I'm not going to hire you. I know that sounds really simple, but uh, we'll get to that. People come in an interview and they badmouth their current employer terribly. You don't like them. <laughs> you may not like us. We have a great culture, but not everybody's perfect. You know, we, you have dysfunction some places. And that's not what we're looking for. So I want you to think of yourself like a brain. Um, how you approach work. Are you a hard worker or are you lazy? You know, do people perceive that? Um, do you get things done on time? Uh, you know, what is the image that you present? And I know you, you know, you're, you're, you're young, you have time to do some searching and think about those things. What's important to me is honesty, integrity. I love helping people. That's my brand. I like to help people. I like to help make them successful if I can. I love their stories. Uh, I look at my interviewing with people as, uh, you know, a great opportunity to hear people's stories. So, you know, build your brand now. You're going to school. <coughs> Education, that's part of your brand. But that shouldn't just be it. You know, um, volunteerism. I can't tell you how great that looks on a resume. And I don't want you to do it just because it looks great, but because it's very satisfying work. Um, our, our president and CEO encourages us to get involved in the community. <clears throat> and it is very satisfying work to use your skills to help other nonprofits, other agencies. Um, and it, it, you know, it shows that you get out there. You also get to meet people. That's a great place to network. I can't tell you, I can go other places and say, hey, so-and-so, hey, so-and-so, you know, people that do things in the community, you get to know them. It's a great exposure opportunity as well. Are you in sports? I love seeing that on a resume. I know that people that have done sports, and if you don't, it's okay, I suck at sports. I'm terrible, but um, <laughs> I sat the bench, I got splinters on my butt in basketball, but, <laughs> but I, got out of, I, I got out of PE, so I didn't have to go into phys ed class <laughs> in basketball. Um, but if you play team sports, I know that you can work with a team. I know that you know there are good things and bad things, and you're willing to, to do things. I love seeing that. Um, on a resume, uh, put it on there. Put those types of things on there. If you have other involvements, other associations, clubs, things that you do. If you have awards or accolades. Oh my gosh, I drool when I see a resume that says, you know, I was the number one salesperson for, you know, life insurance on loans. Oh my gosh, I want that person. I want the person who does all those second sales uh, to come in and, and do that great job with my members. Um, so, you know, we want to see those things. Um, you know, and what is your persona? Do you have two or do you have one? Now, uh, you know, you've probably heard it before. Um, your Facebook, what you do on your Facebook. Um, <clears throat> employers may look. I try not to look because I don't want to make a discriminatory decision. But, um, you know, after the fact, after I, I hired someone, I'll <laughs> here's one of my stories, I'll tell you something. I hired someone and I get this call that, you know, new person, everybody's been looking up their Facebook page, a new person is, his Facebook image picture is uh, him next to a fancy car with a gun and, you know, a gangsta look like this. And, you know, what, I can't do nothing. Uh, but that gave them a perception uh, that made them a little uncomfortable. Now, you know, I could go back and tell those employees that half of our VPs have CPLs, you know, the carrying <laughs> permit. Uh, and not that we carry, can't carry on, on, on ground, so don't come to CP thinking, you know, they're going to do anything about it. But that perception was kind of like, oh, wow, um, you know, is it, is it all your drama out there? Is it all your drama in your work? Is it those, those strange uh, things that you might put out there about, you know, oh, this happened again, you know. Um, what do you see out there? And I know you're thinking Facebook is my Facebook. Maybe you want to lock it down. Uh, that's all I can say. Um, I also encourage you to get on LinkedIn. What a great place to get connected with other business people. It's not like Facebook where people are selective about who they friend. Uh, you know, I got lots of friends on LinkedIn that I barely know, but I know they're in the community and I want to see 
what they put out there, or what they're following, or what they post. So I encourage you to uh, to to do that. Um, your uh, the other persona, <laughs> the stork leg story. That was my low prompt for myself. Uh, you know, I hired an employee who had a good persona. She's super smart, going to school to be a, a teacher. Um, you know, comes across really smart. But then I get complaints that she's in the bathroom with a stork leg, and that means she's sitting on the toilet doing her phone, playing while she should be working. Okay, so what persona? Even pe even in the bathroom, people are perceiving your brand. Okay, uh, so. Um, we talked about LinkedIn and Facebook, I won't go over that. If you're looking for a job, those are great places to start. A lot of people recruit there, a lot of companies recruit there. Um, internet sites, Indeed is one of the largest, uh, with, and it's a free job board. Uh, we post a lot of our stuff there. I looked yesterday, Allegiance has stuff out there. I mean, lots of employers have things on Indeed. ZipRecruiter is a large one, Simply Hired, and Google it is not a, a website, that just means actually Google, you know, looking for a job, because that's all you gotta do to find stuff. Look at the company's website. If you're interested in specific companies, look at their websites, look at their careers, their job postings. That's how we collect data. Most companies now want it electronically. We want our electronic applications. That's how we filter data and collect it um, and, and get your application. Internships are a great way to get exposure, uh, exposure to different places and things that you're gonna do. Um, and remember that you're not gonna start up here you might be Becky Billingsley and start at the ground level, bouncing people's checks and sending out naughty notices. You know, you bounced a check uh, and work your way up. So I want you to remember that sometimes that first job is not always your dream job. In fact, my first job out of college was working at Hutch's over here as a cashier. Um, but I worked my way up to assistant manager. And I would have been assistant store manager, except I took uh, the job at CP as a bookkeeper and a pay cut but I'm still at CP 22 years later. Um, so applications and resumes, uh, I, I went with Sarah's stat thing and I said, I found this on the internet so I know it's true. 76% of resumes are discarded because of an unprofessional email address, okay? So, you know, what are you putting out there? Um, I can give you some examples, true examples that I've seen. Uh, eFreaky, right, at whatever, hotmail.com. Uh, <laughs> um, bad Andy. <laughs> oh, it's so bad about Andy, but he's bad. Um, uh, drunken squirrel. I mean, things like that are just, you know, that one I found in an article. I thought that was so funny. That's great, but don't put that on your resume. <laughs> uh, and you know what? Common sense is sometimes not so common, so you may think that's so stupid. Who would do that? But, but you know, com you know. You don't know what you don't know, honestly. That's my favorite thing to say. Um, you know, online applications give us a peek into your brand when you fill out that application, so don't take it lightly. I'm looking, when I look at an application, even for a teller, I look and say, did they fill it out completely? Did they capitalize letters? Is there a bunch of misspellings? Did they take the time to, to describe what they did or did they just say, you know, in the past, ring cash register? Okay, is that how you're gonna talk to my members in short little, one sentence things, no, that's not what I'm looking for. So I encourage you to make sure you fill those out correctly and completely and be descriptive. Um, list your accomplishments. We talked about awards and accolades. Love to see that on resumes and applications. Um, I put visit me at work unsolicited maybe. Don't come see me. But <laughs> um, you know what? I've hired people because they've came in and said, I get a call from the receptionist that says, so-and-so is down here and they're interested in talking to someone from HR about a job. And I think, well, while I've got them captive, I'm gonna ask them a bunch of questions and see if they might be a good fit for an entry level positions. And sometimes it works out really well. And sometimes, you know, we don't have anything that, that fits their needs, but um, we're a service industry, so it's okay to come in and do that. And it may not be taken so well at other places, but it's just an idea for you. Um, so let's say you get a call for an interview. I want you to go, whether it's your dream job or not. It's a great experience uh, to do. I learned interviewing in college, um, and I joined a business fraternity at Western <coughs> Michigan. And what part of the rush process was for me to interview every one of the existing members. So I must have done 30 interviews, and they had to interview me back at the same time. 
So I got a lot of experience answering questions, talking to people, and I was pretty shy, so that was a great experience for me. But, you know, I want you to go and I want you to be enthusiastic and, and learn. You never know where you're going to see that person. Here's another thing that just came to mind. When I'm out in the community and somebody treats me terrible in the service industry, I think, you don't know, but I could have just given you my card because I wanted to hire you for a job, but you just treated me terribly. I'm not going to do that. You never know who you're waiting on or serving or helping. Um, so remember that brand, uh, that personal brand is so important. When you get the call for the interview, I want you to ask some things um, while they're on the phone. Ask for a job description. Ask what the job is. Don't go into it blindly not knowing what it is. Um, that shows you can read and, and at least see what some of the job duties are. What does it do? Is it full or part time? You know, uh, where is it located? How long should I plan for this interview? If you come to CP, uh, my <clears throat> HR assistant is pretty good about telling employees, plan for an hour, maybe longer. Okay, because I like to talk to people, but I also like to tell them about our culture, about our values, about what's important. So that if they get offered a job, they have a good idea of what we're about. And they know a lot of the stuff that Sarah said, um, you know, they know that that's what they're getting themselves into. Um, prepare, so you want to learn about the company, uh, you know, <clears throat> don't go into a job interview thinking I'm going to let them tell me what it's about. This is not a, a exploratory, uh, you know, thing for you. It's more for you should be prepared to know something about the company, about the job. You should think about how your skills will relate and be relevant to that job. At the interview, bring me stuff. I love recommendation letters, resumes. List of references. It shows that you took a little extra effort. I love thank you notes or thank you emails, by the way. Um, bring your enthusiasm. Each opportunity may not be the one for you, but uh, it's great experience. And I can't even remember the exp interview experience example. My prompt is just killing me. All right, dress the part. So what's the culture where you're interviewing? If you're applying for a job at UPS, um, you know, maybe you're not going to wear the suit and tie. Maybe you're going to wear the khakis and the polo. Uh, if you're applying for a graphic artist position, maybe, again, you're not going to wear the blue suit and the, the white shirt and the, the nondescript tie. Maybe you're going you're gonna to dress more of the part. <coughs> um, what is the culture where you're applying? <coughs> um, look at me. When I'm interviewing you, look at me, <laughs> right? Nobody, I, I've been in interviews, it's incredibly uncomfortable when somebody can't look you in the eye and answer a question. <laughs> it's not an interrogation, uh, you know, it's, it's me getting to know you. So look at the interviewer, make eye contact. Um, and then, you know, expect behavioral interview questions. And what does that mean? Something other, yes, uh, something other than yes or no questions or what would you do when. Um, behavioral interview questions are, what, you know, tell me about a time when you paid attention to detail. Tell me about a time when uh, you provided the wow service. That's one of my questions. Um, and I have an example um, of one of our current employees. His name is Jared. And uh, I interviewed Jared for a job, uh, for a teller position. He's now moved up twice uh, since he's been there. Uh, but when I interviewed him, his wow story for me was uh, I worked at an auto parts place. And I had had someone come in, and I, you know, I helped them out. I was driving home that night, and I happened to see that person along the side of the road with a broke down car. Uh, so I stopped, and I still had my auto, you know, whatever it was, performance auto, whatever it was there, my, my shirt on, and so they recognized me, and I helped them get their car fixed. That was a wow to that person. Even though he was off the clock, uh, he stopped to help someone that he had remembered from earlier in the day, um, and they wrote a nice letter. Those are the kinds of things. It doesn't have to be, a, you know, a super big wow, but I like to know, even if it's just little things. If all you can come up with is, uh, you know, I uh, helped a customer who couldn't find something, I pointed to the aisle. <laughs> That's not the wow. The wow is something that little extra. You know, I've had employees pull a stamp out of their purse. They don't require them to buy stamps for the members, but they have just because that's who they are, you know, or take the extra time with that elderly member. Um, so interview faux pas, 
right? I like the picture, don't wear socks with your Birkenstocks there. Um, scents, okay? Uh, you may think your perfume is great. It may be the perfume of my arch enemy and I hate it. So, so I would say, you know, always be modest with scents. Um, and you know, you can go nose blind, right? We've seen the commercials. You can go nose blind to scents and you think you're putting on the right amount and you're, it's really overpowering for everyone else. Um, this is what I call is the squishy fishy. It's the handshake. You're shaking someone's hand and it's <laughs> nobody likes the squishy fishy handshake. Um, that kind of makes me wonder what people are up to a little bit. Um, <laughs> what are you do with my money? You can't give me a firm handshake. What are you gonna do with a drawer full of you know ten thousand um, dollars? So don't you know you know just don't take them down, but you know have a good firm handshake. <laughs> Uh, look me in the eye. So we talked about you know not being able to look someone in the eye. Again, makes me suspicious of. I don't know what you got going on, but I don't know why you can't look me in the eyeballs. Um, don't make me drag the information out of you. I, if, I have people that can give me answers short and sweet, and if we're done in 20 minutes, I'm concerned. I want to hear about you, and I want you to sell your brand. I don't want you to give me a, a quick nondescript answer, and I don't want to have to drag the information out of you. Um, we had an interview uh, recently um, for our knowledge center, which is a fancy word for our call center. And one of the individuals was a marketing uh, major. He had just gotten a marketing degree and was the, the supervisor, the hiring manager, had to drag information out of him, which was surprising to me. Maybe he picked the wrong <laughs> major because marketing people should be able to talk about things, talk about themselves, talk about what's, what's going on, why they would be a great fit. No, I, that, would, that would have been my choice, except I was too shy. So I loved marketing and I loved management and I went into finance. Um, <laughs> don't badmouth your former employers. Um, and I, I don't know, I can't emphasize that enough. If you, if you don't like me, are you going to talk about all, how terrible it is to all my employees? And, um, you know, and I, I may not be a bad person. Uh, you just maybe, I don't know. So don't bad, that just sets a bad tone. And don't badmouth your family and your friends. I've heard about people's mother-in-laws and all these things. That's, that's too much personal information. Even in the phone screen, you want to be professional when somebody calls you and maybe screens you for them <coughs> to see if maybe is this a good fit to come in for an interview. Uh, tell me too much stuff, and I'm going to get a little worried about what you're going to tell my members and how that's going to be perceived by them. Um, and don't tell me this job would look great on my resume, and that's why I want it. It doesn't feel like you are, you're committed <laughs> to, to my organization and my culture. I understand some people are in college, and this is a great place, and we love to, to hire those individuals. Um, but, uh, you know, I want to know your motivation, too. So, woo! That went really fast. Okay, now I've got this down. All right, so ask questions. This is, I think this is my last slide, almost. Uh, ask the hiring manager or recruiter questions. This is as much about you at the end as it is about you know, the, the company finding a good fit. Um, some of the good questions that I've been asked, do you promote from within? I'd love to answer that question, because the answer is yes at that CP. Um, that a lot of people grow up there. Uh, and our CEO, current CEO, went from part-time teller to CEO. Now, not everybody does that, and they, she didn't skip. <laughs> there was progressions in between. In fact, I supervised her for a little while. That's kind of weird. But, <laughs> um, but sometimes, some places, you, you can grow up there. Um, do you promote from within? What are the top three things you're looking for in a candidate? This can give you a good picture of what kind of skills and what kind of things are they looking for. And, and uh, you know, did I, did I talk about that? Um, why is this position open? That's a good question. What makes, what makes someone successful at XYZ Corporation? Um, somebody asked me, what do you like about your career here? That was a long interview. That was a long interview. I can go on. I've worked there 22 years. I can go on and on about, about my job. Um, and if, if it's not provided or if they don't tell you, it's okay to ask, so what, how long do you expect the process, the selection process to take? Because you may be interviewing for other jobs, and it's good to know, uh, you know, what to expect. In case you get other offers, or are you going to get notified? Oh, that's okay. I think I'm just about done. Um, 
Um, so I want you to remember that everything happens for a reason, and sometimes you don't get that position you wanted. Um, and I know that there's lots of things that I wanted. At, after college, I wanted to go into banking. I wanted to work at a big bank. Um, that most of them aren't even in business now. They've been <laughs> swallowed up by other ones. But I interviewed and second interviewed with them and didn't get the jobs. And I ended up at Hutch's, uh, you know, just, just doing something. But you know what? That experience at Hutch's gave me experience in bookkeeping. That experience in bookkeeping got me in at CP Credit Union, which is way better than a bank. A, a Not-for-profit, uh, in my mind, was, it was a better fit for me than a for-profit institution. Um, and so... I just lost my mojo. <laughs> so, you know what? Um, sometimes you don't start out at the top. Uh, things happen for a reason. I, there was a promotion that I wanted at CP. I wanted to be the financial analyst. And I wanted it so bad, uh, and somebody else got it. But I wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to be on human resources and do what I really feel like is internally better for me. Um, and so those things happen for a reason. It just takes a while to play out. Um, everything is good experience that you can build. Um, so I think that's most of my presentation, but if you guys have questions for Sarah yeah. or questions I. Q &A, Q &A. If you guys want to, this is the time where we'll start doing questions, so if you want to uh, get some more donut coffee and head out if you have something else to do, or stay and ask questions, that's the time to do that. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Um, one of my questions was that, hello, one of my questions is that I with uh, the culture that you guys have and one of the problems that I think can arise is um, just through like the day to day, um, like trying to uphold the culture. So how do you guys get consistent with keeping a sort of like atmosphere that you do? And that's, yeah, it's, we, we actually go to the forefront and um, kind of call each other out sometimes and say, yeah, this is really, really good culture. Um, but it happens, it's hard to maintain that concept. Yeah. And we just kind of make sure that we have things in place and it, it goes through our, um, it's very heavily embedded in our review process that we do. Every our supervisor review process is primarily the culture of checking and making sure you're on um, and then it has to come from the top down. So we have to model the culture every day. And so um, there are times where we strike, uh, but we have to kind of remind each other. It's a group thing, too. I think you noticed that culture statement that we had. It's intentional. It's intentional that we say, we're this way. Um, and again, it's everybody has a little dysfunction, you know, not everybody's perfect, for sure. But um, that certainly helps, and then we have to give each other some grace sometimes because people are human, you know, so you have to give each other grace. And we're also not afraid to invite people to leave the credit union if we feel like it's not a good fit. Find our elsewhere, it's what yeah. we call it, um, yeah. basically. But yeah, no, it's a, it's that reminder though of the culture. We are constantly talking about it, constantly not it. It's almost everywhere on the walls, mm -hmm. you know. So you can't really walk too far without having it kind of trigger that. And if you don't have it where you work now, or you work at a place that stinks, you know what? You still have your own brand mm -hmm. and who you are. You don't have to be a part of. But it. <laughs> so. Um, Oh, sorry. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> okay. So one of the, I think, most important about applying for a job is that, like, often there's so many people applying, so like, what's something that you can do to kind of, like, stand out or make a good impression or just to be remembered, I guess? Hmm. You know, a lot of those things that I mentioned, sometimes networking and knowing people is the best way to, to you know, get your name out there. Oh, I remember this person from volunteering with them. Um, you know, that's always helpful. Um, you know, a lot of the tips that I mentioned, if you can get your foot in the door, are, are super helpful as well. Um, because we want that person that wants to work, that want, that you know has the right behaviors and attitudes and wants to be a part of our organization. I've, yeah, I've always been impressed with people who kind of did went the extra effort, you know, either went online or tried to figure out what type of company we are. You know, so they were saying, oh yeah, I saw that you guys did the CP Federal City Square, that's a really neat project, I really liked it. Connecting themselves to what we do was the biggest uh, thing that I always liked yeah. in interviews, where they actually you know, didn't just look at the job description and the pay, 
they were like, oh, I love your company because, and I want to work here because, and trying to personalize it and connect with that. I have the culture statement on a coaster, and I'll pull that out during my interview, and I'm like, here, read this. No, it's even on our coasters. So. <laughs> Oh, no, that's always been something that I was like, I always was impressed when people tried to personalize themselves. Or call, or make yourself known. Um, like I said, so, well, people call and they want to check on they want to check on their application, and that's okay mm -hmm. because once I've got them captive, <laughs> I might as well talk to them a little bit about what they're looking for, um, you know, rather than just sending out a bazillion resumes. And, you know. With that, can I say a quick call? Yeah. Should I, if we were going to call somebody, should we call HR or the, the area we're applying? Oh man, well the HR, HR person says me, you always call HR. But I would say HR. <laughs> yeah. It's good to follow. And a lot of times you will only get the information. It's to, to HR, so it won't be directly to that hiring manager a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. I just like to about conflict within a work situation. Okay. Um, that's usually something that I'll ask an employer, and they really don't talk too much into it. But being on the sports team too, I do know that when you work in a team, there are some conflicts. Sure. Like, I know you said it's not a problem if we actually leave, but also how do you, instead of just trying to throw a person out, how do you try to resolve the situation in a way that effectively better the company itself? And then, you know, you can also help a person as well with mm -hmm. something maybe they have an attitude they need to fix or like, you kind of guide them through those steps. Yeah. We, Sarah mentioned the coaching piece is what we're, we're, we're really working on with our, our supervisors now and coaching employees about maybe some of those things because you know there's those those people that are real direct and, <laughs> and sometimes you got to have a conversation you know what we don't just fire people willy-nilly I don't want you to think that um, we use a progressive process then the first step is hey uh, you know this isn't really part of our culture this isn't what we do and if it continues and they can't stop it, um, that's a problem, right? So we give several chances um, as well. And we do a lot of personality profiles. Um, we try to do, um, we have the entry uh, XT, profile XT. XT. Mm -hmm. And then we've done other exercises where we try to understand our team members better. So how we can relate to them. Because I have one, you, you do not surprise them with anything. And we're in marketing. I mean, I can go down there and there's, it's a different, every day is different. Stuff pops up. They need stuff right away. We have to go out in the lobby. There's a line out the door. We got to do popcorn or something to, you know, calm the members down. Whatever. So you, but I have an employee who you cannot surprise with stuff like that. It just throws her all off. She just kind of, it, she does not react well. She has to plan everything her own. And so we try to understand each other in the marketing team. Oh, I know you don't like this, you know. So we try to understand their personalities and how they react to things, so we can better work with each other because I'm a totally different person and I was like sure I'll just drop what I'm doing and I'll go down and do you know so um, a lot of that we have a lot of that information available for supervisors to utilize and so they can help their team members better navigate each other as, so, and resolve conflicts that yeah and um, you know also as human beings we have to give other people grace and we look at the situation and say does this really warrant a slap on the hand or is this a temporary thing and this person's really got a lot of stress we, you know, we went through a conversion, and that's that's a lot of work, and it's a lot of stress. Um, and we knew it; we prepared staff for it. But you know, it sometimes it brings out a little bit of the worst. And we said, "Hey, let's just let's just go with the flow for a while. It's going to be okay." You know, you yeah, got to give people a little bit of grace too. We have a lot of cool examples that I wasn't able to get into because of time. But um, for our conversion, we had a we developed an impact team. So it was a team of employees who were their basic purpose was to make sure to watch out for people that were stressing out or um, just struggling with certain things or doing a great job. So they would recognize them, they would, they would show them a little love. So they all, everybody filled out a survey. So I knew exactly that you liked uh, Twix bars and I know that you liked Diet Coke and I know that you, so we could each like recognize people and put a little extra on their desk or surprise them with this, that and the other thing. So um, the impact team is something that I think we're gonna continue throughout just to make sure we're engaging that member or the employee piece and the recognition. But that was one of the cool examples we had. Not a lot of black and white, you know, fast answers in <laughs> situations. You always have to look at everything, and you have to look at the conflict and the source. And, uh, I hope that was helpful that was cool. in a way. <laughs> yes. So you were talking about earlier how you should like, or you should that it was okay to call 
um, and check up on your application. Yeah. How do you find who to call? You call like, and ask. <laughs> <laughs> like, it might be the, it might be if they're a large uh, place, they might have you know like us, they have a, a human resources area. Um, you know, say I want to call and check on my job application. Is there someone in human resources that I can talk to, or is there a hiring manager I can talk to? Um, you know, if it's a small service place, maybe you just want to stop in. You know, don't be wearing flip flops and cut offs, but you know, have some you know conservative you know decent clothes. But um, that's always good too. Um, sometimes you may not be able to. Uh, yeah. And you have to you know part of the presentation I probably didn't say sometimes. Employers are looking for a person with a lot of experience. I applied for, this is funny, I applied for a branch manager job uh, right out of college. Um, at the time I thought it was a great idea, but now that I look back, it was a branch manager job for CP because I went back and looked through, I saved all my cover letters, and I went, what was I thinking? I was no way qualified for that position. I didn't have the experience or the knowledge or working with staff. So you have to remember that, you know, you're going to have some that just really aren't a good fit and they're not going to want to maybe necessarily talk to you, but there are, there are lots of things out there. And sometimes they do work out. Sometimes they do. Because I, uh, I was basically applying as a VP of marketing, and I was straight out of college, and I worked at a beer distributor. No experience in marketing. Definitely no experience in um, uh, financial institution, anything. And uh, I applied just to get experience in interviewing, <laughs> and I got the job. Um, yeah. I, I have no idea how. I'm pretty sure I don't know what the CEO was thinking, and I tell him that all the time. Um, but uh, yeah, so it does work out. And then I got kind of got into the job, and I thought, well, what am I doing here? Um, so it's taken me, you know, 19 years to figure that out. But I'm still there, <laughs> and it's worked out well. But yeah, it, it sometimes it does. And like you said, just getting your foot in the door and interviewing experience sometimes, yeah, sounds. Some of the, sometimes um, we look for people, we'll send a call out to our managers and supervisors and say, hey, you know what, we're looking for somebody with some sort of maybe lending or business lending or we can't find that, maybe mortgage lending experience. Do you know someone? I cannot tell you. One of Sarah's employees sends me someone every single time. And <laughs> uh, I think or two or three someones because uh, they're out in the community. They're talking to businesses, you know. They're doing events. They get exposure to those people. And mm -hmm. so that's why I say get get out, do things, get involved, you know, volunteer in the community, whatever you can do. Great experience. Yeah, and like you said, there's you never know who you're coming in contact with at all. Mm -hmm. so you just always make a good impression no matter what you're doing. Take pride in the work. Anything else? Well, yeah, I want to add while. something real quick just from what Becky was talking about with the LinkedIn thing. Um, that is a fantastic resource and um, a cool tool that it has within it is um, it, it created a university alumni feature. So all universities, so Spring Arbor included, um, the alumni that are on there since it says Spring Arbor is where they went, it filters them into a different group. So there's like about 15,000-ish alumni that are within LinkedIn, but then you can filter it all different ways. So you can just click on, so if you like kind of type at the top Spring Arbor University and like join the Spring Arbor group, um, you can filter it by different ways. So if you're just interested in Grand Rapids, you just click that and it sorts it to like the 1,000 alumni in that area. And then it's all the different um, organizations that they work at and all the different position titles. So it says, I'm interested in social work in Grand Rapids, so then it filters it to like 90 people, and then you can say I'm interested in HR in the social work industry, you know, and it filters it down and down, so you can just start seeing where people are at, what connections there are, um, and then just people that might be a resource to ask how they got into doing what they're doing, if there's uh, things they're aware of. So um, even if you're thinking, oh, I don't have a, a lot to put on my profile to market myself, even to use that as, as a tool where you can search people out and see who's out there. Um, definitely take some time and just utilize it because it's just a great free resource that's there um, and it helps you to connect with people that already have a similar affinity because they came to the same institution as you. Well, we're about out of time anyway, so if you guys want maybe to stay around for the next <coughs>